All right, this time I'm going to improvise a story. And try to, once again, I'm trying to draw through a lens so it's a bit harder to concentrate. So I'm just watching the pencil through the camera. It's like harder to focus on drawing. So that means I'm going to try to distract myself and free associate with the pencil and improvise a story. Once upon a time, there was a frog named Lackluster and Lackluster really liked to go to the beach. The beach was a nostalgic place for him as he had had his first hot dog there. Um, the first hot dog was very important to him because it had been a life goal of his to try hot dogs. Um, they weren't common in his neck of the woods. And he'd grown up um, always unsure of how hot dogs were supposed to taste, but always really wanting to try them. And, you know... At some point, he kind of realized, you know, I'm not going to be fulfilled unless I know how hot dogs taste, you know? So, uh, he went to a beach, um, just, uh, just like near a much more famous town. It was just like, you know, they still tried to soak up some of the tourists from the nearby town, but, um, this beach in and of itself was not a famous beach, you know? But he went there on vacation once, and he got to try a hot dog for the first time. And he was like, this is pretty good. But the thing about the hot dog was, you know, of course they say, never meet your heroes. Because, you know, it's, it's trying a hot dog is, is a, bit, a bit underwhelming when you've been, like, working it up in your mind for a really long time. Like, what do you do when the hot dog isn't what you thought it was going to be? Like, what do you do when you expected something a little more sweet and then you end up with, like, something a little more savory? Um, what do you want hot dogs to be when you're never given the opportunity to have one and you just see them in books? Like, what is that, you know? So... What he did next was, you know, basically just break down. Not that hard. And he didn't really realize he was breaking down at first. He was like, yeah, no, it's it, it's great. I got to try hot dogs. It was awesome. Um, you know, he told everybody he was really happy because he got to try hot dogs for the first time. And, you know, he'd been wanting to try hot dogs since he was, like, eight. And when he finally tried one, he was like... 27, you know what I mean? Like, God. At 27, he was he was just like, man. And then one day, he just kind of realized, like, oh my God, I don't like hot dogs. And what do you do with that? when your whole thing, your whole identity, all your life was liking hot dogs. So, it took him some time, but eventually he was at least able to admit this, this to himself, like this simple fact, like, okay, I don't like hot dogs, what do I do about this? Um... He rebelled, you know, against whatever he could, he, whatever he could get his hands on. 
um, he kept telling people, like, I don't know why I can't stop, like, just doing things, like, without, without my own permission, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like I'm impulsive, and I just can't stop, no matter how hard I try, you know. And, uh, it, it wasn't pretty, you know. Um, it was not until he was 28 years old that he really started delving into, um, what would make him happy. Um, and when I say would, I don't mean someday in the future. I mean right now. So at 28, right now, he was like, you know, how about I just, like, do what I want in the moment, um, and just don't fight it, you know? Um, but the thing was, that's not always a healthy way to go. So he started doing things that just weren't, like, healthy because they were in the moment, and you may as well just do what you want in the moment, right? Um it's tricky to balance between um, fucking yourself up further and allowing yourself to be imperfect. And I think that um, when it came to lackluster, he just kind of did both, and it was hard for him to tell uh, what was and wasn't right. And he, you know, eventually he was like, well, I've got to know, or I'm not going to be able to keep functioning. Um, he went through phases of wanting a religion or not wanting one. Um, and he knew kind of deep down that he needed a religion, but God, which one, right? There's so many. And then finally he said, how about I just make my own? Just for me, not for anyone else, not try to convert anyone, you know, just make my own and just, you know, keep it private and follow it and see what happens, you know? So he became a solitary practitioner of what he called lackluster's personal religion. And, uh, that religion ended up being what saved him. Um, you know, not the religion of his family and not the religion of his friends but the religion of only specifically him. Um, but what do you do when a religion is just for you? Um, because who do you go to for guidance in that case? Um, if you're the only one in the religion, how do you know when the religion is um, getting corrupt? Like, who's, who's going to check you? Um, because when there's a lot of different, you know, people involved, you can just, you know, check in with them and they can check in with you and be like, hey, uh, they can hold you accountable. They can be, they can be like, do you think maybe you're doing this wrong? And you can be like, I, I don't know. Or you can be like, yes, I, I, I think that I'm doing it wrong. Or you could be like, no, you're wrong. I think I'm doing it right. Um, when you're alone and when your religion, um, and when the cornerstone aspects of it involve just being alone, well, what do you say to yourself when you don't know if you're doing things wrong or right? Um, and Lackluster really had to deal with that, you know. 
and that was hard for him to accept that his religion could be right for him and yet wrong sometimes. But that was what happened. Um, was his religion was only right sometimes, just like any other religion. Um, you know, one of the reasons that he fell out with religion a lot of the time in the past was just like they all one thing they all seem to have in common is that they think they're right, you know. And he was like, my religion will never be like that. But of course, that's impossible. He he was gonna think that he was right. And a lot of his ideas and his personal philosophy were founded upon the fact that no one can be 100% right. But he wanted so badly to be right, it was impossible. You know, it drove him crazy. Um... There were times where he felt as though that need was driving him literally crazy. Um, and so he would just get angry with himself and he would like toss it in God's direction and be like, what are you doing? You know, he'd, he'd think that God was the one being a dick somehow. And then like, no, you know, it was him. But was it just him or was God capable of being at fault in any way, shape, or form. And what frustrated him was, like, he could never really know he didn't think. Um, a lot of what worried him deep down inside was, um, he could, he could devote as much time as he wanted to, um, a religion that he thought was right. Um, you know. But what good was that if, um, if God wasn't good? Um, and there wasn't really a way for him to, to just, like, look into the sky and be like, hey, God, will you answer me very clearly? Um, whether or not you're good, and, you know, the, he wasn't going to hear God's voice come down, right? And, and be like, Oh yeah, I, I am, you know, is it, you know, not to give God like a, a silly voice. But, you know, sometimes that would be the voice he'd hear in his head for God, because... Um, you know, he was angry because of years of suffering that he felt that should have been preventable. Because if God was who he said he was, but that was the thing. God never said anything clearly enough. So, one day, he told God, just be frank with me about what I'm supposed to do, and I will do my best, um, but I can't walk around living in confusion after years and years of asking for specific answers, you know. Um, he said, I can't carry on unless I know specifically what I'm supposed to do. And, um, also, he said to God, um, he said, and don't make this some, like, weird Twilight Zone scenario where I ask for something and I get, like, the worst, saddest, most tragic version of it. Like, I'm just asking for a relationship. 